So first, um, make sure your R code is open by R Studio. So once you are on R, uh, uh, sorry, I need to also uh, put the font a little smaller. Uh, change the preference, appearance. Okay, so. Again, you can highlight the code and, and just run through it. So I'm going to highlight the first few lines of code and then click. Uh, if you leave the mouse over there long enough, you can see uh, uh, what those the icons stand for. This will be, say, run the current line of selection. So on uh, Mac, there is a shortcut, say, you click the command and the enter. That will be your shortcut. Or you can just click that sign. So I highlight this uh, line three and four. It's uh, it's now running at the bottom of it. So if you look on the right, that's the uh, current running status. At the at bottom uh, right, that's the going to be the where the plot and the, some uh, actual help information will be. So if you have never installed those the source and uh, there's some software package you will need to use. You need to uh, uncommon those lines and then run those three lines. So if I, so I, I pretend I have not installed it, I just run it. So th you have to be on internet for this to run. This is going to take probably a few minutes. Um, so, so you will see those are downloading information. Right, so it's download about uh, 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 20 max some file and then install everything. Once you see this, that means the file has been installed. Uh, after you installed uh, the software pack, you do not have to run it again. So you can put a pound sign in front of it. And whoops, uh, that's just common now. So those become common and they will not be run again. And we, these two line, uh, this line say require flow call and flow class. That's just to make sure the software uh, we just installed will be loaded into the current uh, working environment. There. So it's loading required package for the call. And then, oh, uh, before I do this, I w actually, I should do this at the start. I want to make sure my working directory is a current working directory. So this will be a session set working directory to the source file location. Uh, actually, should do this at the start of the so, so, uh, code, running code, but I forgot to do that. OK, so after I do that, uh, I'm going to highlight the data folder. So the data folder is in the folder called FCS. If you go to the file, you will see this is the FCS uh, directory. And those are the actual data we are going to analyze. So M22 blank and DHE stand. YPS128 blank and the DHE stand, uh, just two strands, one uh, a blank control and the DHE stand. So we go back to the R code and uh, run these two lines. Run, and uh, you can actually see the, the file is already there. So we see the uh, four file M22 blank and YPS blank, and they are also DHE stand uh, files. Okay, and. Uh, Next, we are going to just uh, read the files and then analyze them. So uh, now, it's probably a lot of detail for most of you since you haven't learned, many of you are still not familiar with the problem. So I'm going to just highlight all those and uh, run it. Now, the basic idea is uh, uh, ignore those warnings. And I don't have the time to debug it. But it's probably a minor thing because uh, you can actually see the data is already there. So those are just some minor things. Uh, so basically, we are using a for loop, iteration loop, to go over every data file in that FCS directory and then analyze all the files. And while analyze all the files, we, uh, we, we store the, the, the result into a, a, a container. And that container is called merged FL3. That's, a, that's my temporary container to put every running result there. And then I going over all the uh, flow cytometer data, I use something called uh, read FCS, uh, read the flow cytometer data. That's 
how the data are read in. And then I say take the rectangle gate. Uh, some of you have done flow cytometer before, so you know uh, in flow cytometer, because there are so many signals, sometimes we set up a gate. Uh, it's basically some, uh, some kind of a filtering zone. Uh, you put, a, put a, a boundary of some signals. Every signal inside of that gate or boundary, we, we will analyze them. So that's because flow cytometer is so sensitive. There are many debris or completely strange things can be detected. So we want to remove all those strange things. So that's just to make sure we are picking the right signal. And then I'm going to actually do a log transformation of the signal and then analyze it. That's actually a, a common procedure in many of the uh, data analysis because the the original data is completely skewed. It has a very small value, also very large value. We, after we take a log, we transform them into a bell shape. It's a normal a bell shaped signal, and then we analyze them. And that's this is just to make sure I know which data I'm analyzing with. And I analyze the current data, to, and then I store them. I think. Uh, oh, this is actually just store all the data. Yeah. And um, okay, uh, I, th I think I have analyzed the data. Okay, so if you if you click on the uh, the right hand side is at the top. You see, they, this is actually the merged the data. Uh, the first column is some uh, temporary with nothing there. So I want to remove that first column. I only want to keep them two, three, four, five. So the way I do it basically is this. I'm going to take the column 225 and call it, assign it to yourself again. And I'm also going to put this into something called data frame. Data frame is basically data frame is basically the spreadsheet inside of the R. In in Excel we call it spreadsheet. In R we uh, we call it a data frame. So and then I call the command called summary, looking at all those merged data. So there, those are all the merger data. So M22 blank, M22 DHE signal, YPS128 blank, and YPS128 DHE stand. So, if you, so the summary is a very useful command. It actually tells you the mean signal of those DHE signal. So the blank has a 0.74, YPS128 blank has a mean of 0.68. So, so there, without any standing, we, we realize the baseline are not the same. One is uh, 0.74, the other one 0.68. The median is also different, 0.75, the other one 0.69. So there, the signal are not the same. And then you have M22 also has a different signal, median, mean, with the YPS128, 1.469, 1.539. So we need, actually need to first remove the baseline and then see whether they are the same or not. Uh, now if we don't do that, we can still plot, we can actually plot the entire signal uh, without, before any adjustment. So when we plot this, this time I actually put them, put them directly into a PDF file. So if I run, uh, I forgot whether I, oh I have run that one. So I'm going to highlight, uh, 47 to 50 and run these lines. So there's no plot coming out on the screen. That's because they were put into a file called DHE box plot now. I double click on that. That's the plot. So <clears throat> those are the blank uh, signals. Uh, I'm 22 signal is here. They are actually fairly close, but still uh, there will be quite a significant difference among those. So if we want to compare the real signal, we need to remove the baseline. Go back to my R code. So the head is also a useful command. If some of you have used a Linux, you will know the head is also a Unix command. It's just look at the first few lines of any text file. And we can also so those are the, uh, the again, just, it basically is a matrix file. It's like, it's like a spreadsheet. So we can do the summary. 
again for this and you will see the 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 now the way the first column has been removed now if we do t test on the signal directly it will be highly significant but we haven't adjust for the baseline yet so we can adjust the baseline using the mean signal so here i'm adjusting the the baseline by taking the mean value of the blank and then min uh, remove it minus this from the DHE signal on M22. So this is basically what I'm highlighting is basically the si the DHE signal of M22 after remove the its baseline signal. And uh, and the, the same thing at the bottom will be for YPS 120A. That's also the mean signal, which is the baseline of uh, YPS 120A. And then I remove it from its DHE signal. And then I do a t-test between them. OK, so I do this. You can still see uh, at the bottom, you will see the mean signal. After I adjust it, when is 0.85, the other one is 0.81. It's actually still quite a lot. Remember, I take log 10 of this. So log 10 to 0 0.03. Uh, actually, let me do this. Uh, it's so 10.03, let's see this. Ah, uh, oh, maybe maybe that's small enough. So that's basically is a number one difference among them. So, OK, but if I remove the medium, see whether the signal is, uh, the correction is, will be better. Remove the medium, the difference becomes 0.83 to 0.80. It's still 0.03. So it's actually not, there's no difference between the correction using medium or using the mean signal. The, but the point is they are still highly significant at this point. So I'm going to, for, for this lab, I think I'll just leave it as it is. It, 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 I, uh, we don't have many other strain right now, a strain right now, but this is probably something is statistically significant, but maybe not biologically significant at the moment. So we still see a highly significant difference among them, but maybe not really biologically important. But that's something else. OK, so I'm going to, OK. Uh, I will stop there.